now the adventures of Superman. In attempting to trap two racketeer song publishers who had fleeced Editor White's little cook, Poco, out of $450, cub reporter Jimmy Olsen and Beanie Martin, the Daily Planet copy boy, were themselves trapped. Tied up and left in the locked office of the racketeers, Jimmy and Beanie accidentally overturned a smoking stand and started a fire that swept through the ancient office building. After Beanie had been overcome by the smoke, Jimmy managed to dial a telephone with a pencil held between his teeth and calling Clark Kent succeeded in gasping out where he was before collapsing. As we continue now, Kent in his true identity of Superman is rocketing through the skies and approaching the blazing building. Below him, he sees a great crowd and several companies of firemen battling the spectacular blaze. Listen. Great Scott. That building is going up like a matchbox. Jim and Beanie are trapped in it somewhere. But where are they? I don't see them. Better circle the building again. Away! Still don't see them. Maybe I'm too late. Maybe they both... Wait a minute. Down there in that office. Two boys on the floor. Yes, it's Jim and Beanie. Down to them. Down! Jim. Beanie. They're unconscious. If only they're still alive. Uh-oh. Better get going fast before that ceiling falls on us. Up with them. Now, Jim. There we are. Now, out of here in a hurry. Up and away! <laughs> Brain crackpot idiotic stunts I ever heard of. Why did you and Beanie try to bag a couple of big time racketeers all by yourselves, Olsen? Why? Why? Chief, oh, it's... Chief, I mean, Mr. White, how were we to know they were such bad eggs? Oh, that's right, Chief. How were you to know? You said you suspected they were dishonest in the first place, didn't you? Well, of course, Chief. Jim knows that legitimate publishers don't solicit songs from amateurs, and that they never ask the author to pay part of the publishing costs, like they asked Poco, but. Okay, still, he... okay. So they knew they were dealing with crooks. And they knew Poco had been tricked into putting up $450 by those phonies who never had any intention of publishing his song. So why did they do it? Oh, now, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Chief. Jim is ready to admit he made a mistake, and I'm sure he won't make the same one again. He meant well. He wanted to recover Poco's money and prevent other people from being fleeced like that. Sure. Plenty of people are swindled every day by racketeers. Well, that's because they don't think. Well, they don't stop to investigate these smooth talkers before they hand over their hard-earned money. Oh. How are you going to tell when a man's on the up and up? It's easy enough to ask for references before you pay out money to a stranger. Or to consult the Better Business Bureau or the Chamber of Commerce or your lawyer or your banker, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Wait a minute, Chief. That gives me an idea. As Jim said, people are being swindled out of thousands of dollars every day by racketeers. And there are so many of them, the police can't round them all up. Let us do something to help the law. Us? Well, what do you mean, Mr. Ken? The Daily Planet can do a lot to scotch the operation of slickers like Professor Blessing by asking our readers to contact us when they've been swindled or when they suspect someone might be trying to take them in. Then we can investigate and blow the racket wide open. Hmm. Oh, you mean put on sort of a racket-busting campaign? Sure, that's right, Jim. Gee, it's a swell idea. What do you say, Chief? Well, you may have something there, Kent. Sounds as if it may make a good public service feature and it can't hurt our circulation either. I'll tell you what. what? You and Lois... Uh... Oh, I forgot. Lois is still in California. Well, you head up this new department alone, then, and Jim can help you. Hot dog. Well. Get busy on it right away. Okay. Uh, knock out a story for page one, all about the danger of rackets. Uh -huh. How much money is swindled from innocent citizens every day. You can get the figures from the DA's office. Uh -huh. And how we want our readers to cooperate with us, and so on, okay, and so Chief. on. Uh, set up a regular feature. Uh, say, a uh, full page in the picture section every day. Right. We'll drive the racketeers out of Metropolis, or I'll know why. <laughs> Clark Kent speaking. This is Inspector Henderson. Oh, hello, Inspector. Hope you're going to tell me you caught up with Professor Blessing and Froggy. Uh, no such luck, Kent. Now, listen. I've just seen the Daily Planet. Uh-huh. Do you fellas mean what you're saying? That you'll stop at nothing to expose and help drive the racketeers out of Metropolis? You bet we do, Inspector. Well, uh, how soon can you get down to headquarters? Oh, in a second. Uh, I mean, in a, in a few minutes. Good. I've got a story for you that'll knock your eyes out. Yeah? That is, if you and Perry White have the courage to follow through on it. What do you mean, if we have the courage? Off your high horse now and get down here as quickly as you can, Kent. Bring White with you and I'll tell you all about it. Right, we'll be there in two shakes. Bye. <laughs> 
intrigued by Inspector Henderson's promise of a big story for the Daily Planet's racket-busting campaign, Clark Kent Collar's headed to Perry White, and together they hurry from the Daily Planet to police headquarters. What has Inspector Henderson in mind? We'll return in a moment to find out. So stand by. Say, gang, here's something that'll really hand you a laugh. It's that picture of Goofy from Harold Teen, one of the brand new series of comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Talk about comical, or you'll start to chuckle the minute you see that silly grin on his foot face and, and in his standout ears and the way he wears that old hat sitting right back in his head. Yes, sir, Goofy is sure on the beam when it comes to fun. And all the rest of those 18 new pep comic buttons, too. For instance, the Toots and Casper and the Inspector and Barney Google, Pat Patton, Tess Trueheart, Chief Brandon, and Vitamin Flintheart from Dick Tracy and Superman, of course. Well, you'll want to collect all 18 of these new and different buttons and sport them on your jacket or your dress or cap. So ask Mom to keep you supplied with lots of Kellogg's Pep, because that's the only way you can get these exclusive prizes. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop, and you can't buy them anywhere, but there's a comic button prize inside every package of Pep you open. And there's a prize of good eating, too, because Pep is the whole wheat flake cereal with those come-back-for-more flavors. Yes, sir, Pep is so loaded with that catchy sunshine flavor that, well, you practically can't resist it. So ask Mom for P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Clark Kent and Perry White have just arrived at Metropolis Police Headquarters, where Inspector Henderson is saying... Uh, you say in the planet that you want to help drive the racketeers out of Metropolis, gentlemen, and that you'll stop at nothing to do it. Are you sure? Well, of course we're sure. We wouldn't say anything we don't mean. Okay. But what I have in mind is daring and dangerous. Okay, spill it. What's the story? Just this. I can give you a terrific story about a racket that's costing metropolis citizens a fortune every day. And which we believe is responsible for two unsolved murders. Well, let's have it. All right. Here it is. Now, you know, of course, that the housing shortage has resulted in quite a few rackets. Oh, it certainly has. Crooks have resorted to all sorts of tricks to take advantage of returned G.I.s as well as other citizens who need a roof over their heads. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've heard a lot about that. So what? Well, the worst racket we've come across, and the one I admit we can use some help on, is this. Certain individuals who we believe are part of a vicious ring have been opening offices here and there and circularizing returned veterans, offering them lots for sale and saying they'll build home on the lots as soon as possible. Uh-huh. Go on. Uh-huh. Well, now, naturally, they're flooded with answers from people who need homes. They take the applicants out and show them the lots for sale, usually in the suburbs, of course, and show them plans for every sort of home. Then they take deposits from 500 to $2,000 on the land and the proposed home. I see. Then when the time comes for the purchaser to take title to his land, he finds out that the crooks who sold it to him never owned it. What? what? Yes, these racketeers are selling land they don't own and taking deposits to build houses on it. Right. God. And when they report it to you and you investigate, the racketeers have flown the coop. Is that it? Exactly. Their offices are closed and they've vanished. Until they turn up in a new location practicing the same racket. Well, now look, Inspector, can't you catch up with them by running down all circulars and reports of their activities? Well, we've tried that, Kent. No. We've had one of our men answer every real estate ad, except those published by well-known real estate agents and builders. Mm-hmm. But these racketeers are clever. I know. They obviously screen the answers pretty carefully. Only once. Did our man fool them? Well, what happened? He was shot in front of his home. He was? That's right. Apparently, the racketeers became suspicious of him. Traced him to his house, found out who he was, and finished him before he could even tell us who they were. Right. Uh, Another fellow called us up one day. Said he was a veteran who suspected he was being fleeced in a racket like this. Uh Well, we told him to come in and give us the details. He was shot on his way to headquarters. Hey, that is serious. I think I'm beginning to see what you want the Daily Planet to do, Inspector. Specifically, I want you to play this story to the hilt in your paper. Give it so much publicity that all citizens will know about it. And investigate thoroughly before they hand over any money. I see. And that way, we can break those phony deals wide open and drive these racketeers out of business. Well, that's one of the most vicious swindles I've ever heard of. We'll work with you, Inspector. Now, wait a minute. I told you I was quite sure a gang was running this racket. Yes? Mm, So what? Well, we believe they're already responsible for two murders. All the more reason to smoke them out and bring them to justice. You bet. We'll go to town. Now, let me finish, will you? These fellows have been reaping a fortune, and they've shown they'll go to any length, even murders, to go on milking the public. What are you trying to do, scare us? No, but it's my duty to warn you. If the Daily Planet declares war on this gang, you may very well run into serious personal danger. We're not afraid of danger, Inspector. You bet we're not. Inspector? Here's how we start, Kent. 
Stop it. Four column head on page one and then shoot the work. No, wait. Chief, I want wait. a big story on this housing racket and I want you to write it. Okay, okay. But before we go on, Chief, I Tell just the public I... how it works, what to look out for, and instruct them to contact the police or us at once if and when they're approached by racketeers. Well, but listen, Chief. Uh, I stop did... interrupting. Put everything into your first story. Everything Inspector Henderson told us. But don't you we'll see We'll that... run those dirty swindlers out of Metropolis. All right. Now but... you get out of here and go to work. I want to see the crackerjack story in one hour. Well, well, what are you waiting for? Didn't you hear me say I wanted the story in an hour? Sure, sure, I heard you. Then what are you sitting there like a like a like a like a, like a lump for? Just waiting to make sure you run out of breath and can finish the sentence so I can get a word in. Why you? Now listen, you... Chief, but I haven't time to listen. I want your copy for our first edition. Oh, you do. It's a big story, Kenton. A big story. Don't you realize that? Just it, Chief. I'm afraid it might be too big a story. Too big? What are you talking about? You heard what Inspector Henderson said. He thinks there's a dangerous ring of criminals behind this real estate racket. Well? And he believes they're responsible for those two unsolved murders last week. All the more reason to go right to work on that gang and give them everything we have. Yes, but how long do you think they should get away with selling land they don't own? Well, they should. And taking the last dollar of savings from veterans who fought for their country as deposit on homes they have no intention of ever building. Naturally, they shouldn't get away with it. But do you realize, Chief, that if those racketeers, whoever they are, didn't hesitate to shoot a police detective, they certainly won't hesitate to attempt similar violence against you if we make ourselves a menace to them? Ah, uh, puppy. Cox. Racketeers who cheat innocent people out of their money are cowards. That may the be, moment but... the spotlight of publicity is turned on them and their victims can see the glass in their phony diamonds, they're done for. Maybe true ordinarily. The men behind this housing racket are not small-time thieves. They're in the big money, and they're not going to take it. Hey, any... look here, Kent. Have you got cold feet? I afraid? Oh, if you knew how funny that was. Then what is the matter with you? Starting this campaign was your idea in the first place. Granted. How I come that just as soon as we're on the trail of a big racket, you sound as if you want to back out? It isn't that at all. Just that I'm worried about you. I suggest we hold up the publicity on this thing until I've had a chance to break this particular racket on my own. On your own? Yes. Are you kidding? Not at all. Just give me a week at it alone and I'll and promise... And you'll wind up in the city more. Nothing of the sort. Now, listen to me, Chief, please. Oh, stop it, Ken. Stop it, stop it. You talk like a child. Like a child? The whole police department hasn't been able to track down these racketeers. All right. And that's, uh, a... that's why they asked us to help. Now you think you can handle it alone. Oh, I'm quite sure I can. What's more, you know from experience that I can. I'm running this paper, and I told you we're going to break those racketeers by blinding them with publicity. Well, have I heard now this go to your before. typewriter and write that story. And do it this minute. Okay, okay, Chief. But remember, I warned you. Copy, copy, boy, on the double. Mr. Kent. Oh, here you are, Beanie. Yes, sir. Rush this, Mr. Burroughs, please. It's the lead story for the noon edition. Okie okay, doke, Mr. Kent. I'm on my way. You wanted to see me, Chief? Yes, yes. Inspector Henderson just called, Kent. Oh? He wanted to congratulate us on our page one story in the housing racket today. Uh-huh. He says that's the kind of publicity that'll put those swindlers out of business. Sure, Open sure. the public's eyes. Yes, sir. Publicity and more publicity. And that's what we're going to get them until the leeches are driven out of Metropolis. Well, I just hope nothing worse happens. No, there you go again, worrying about your own price of skin. I'm not worried about my skin. I'm worried about yours and Tim's and Lois's and everyone else on this newspaper. Well, confound it, Kent. You're turning into an old woman. I tell you, racketeers are cowards. They won't dare to get in touch with us. Now, wait a minute. I want to talk to you about the story we're going to run tomorrow. Okay. Very wise speaking. Are you the editor of the planet? I am. Who are you? Never mind who I am. Just get this. I want you to pull that so-called housing racket story out of your paper. What, what, what's that? What is it, Chief? You heard me pull that story out and fast, or you get a chance to be sorry. Is that so? Look, who in places are you? I said never mind who I am. I'm just telling you what to do in a nice way, giving you a chance to save your neck. The next time I won't tell you. Not so nicely, anyhow. Why, of all the... Now, look here, you... you, you, you what is it? Quiet, quiet. Quiet. Uh, listen to me, you, you insolent whoever you are. If you think you can scare me, yes. you've got another thing coming. Nobody tells me what to put into the Daily Planet, nor what to take out, either. Okay, but I'm warning you, brother. You're warning me? Why, you, you tin horn coward, you haven't got the nerve to come into my office or even give me your name. Be smart, Mr. White. Don't ask for trouble. Better think over what I say. I have thought it over. And, well, now you listen to me. You, me you, you get away, Ken. Get away. Will you? Now listen, you, Mr. I'm doing no listening, White, except are you or are you not going to pull I am not. And what's more, tomorrow's story will make today's story read like a valentine. Laugh that off, Mr. Racketeer. When that story is out of the next edition, you're all through laughing for good. Think it over, brother. I won't call you again. Hello. 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 Don't waste your breath. Hello. He hung up. Hello. You're right, he did. Well, how do you like that, Kent? That was one of the real estate racketeers, I'll bet. Of course it was. Well, imagine his having the nerve to order me. Order me, mind you, to pull that housing racket story out of the planet. 
Well, I was afraid something like this would happen, Chief. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. He was just bluffing. I doubt it. I think he meant business. And now we're in for serious trouble, Chief. Serious trouble. <laughs> Worried and justifiably so, Clark Kent frowns as he tries to figure the racketeer's next move. Trouble is definitely on the way for our friends. So stand by for the exciting climax of today's episode. You know, gang, one of the best things about this brand new series of comic buttons Kellogg's Pet is putting out is that you keep right on having fun. Yes, sir. That's why Pet put out this new series in the first place, because the other Pet comic buttons have been so popular with the gang, everybody wanted more. And collecting these exciting prizes is not something that you do in a minute and then forget. No, sir, you get loads of fun for weeks and weeks. First off, it's mighty exciting to see which button is inside when Mom opens a new package of pets. Maybe it'll be a Judy or Corky from Gasoline Alley, or Cindy, or Superman himself. Or maybe it'll be a duplicate so that you'll have the fun of scouting around to see which one of your pals has a different button to swap with you. Now, it's a cinch to collect all 18 different buttons in this brand new series. All you do is to ask Mom to get you some Kellogg's Pet and look inside the package for your new comic button. Remember, you can't buy them, and you don't send in either money or a box stop. They come as prizes, one in each package of Kellogg's Pet. And you're going to like Pet for another reason, too, because it tastes so keen. Why, Kellogg's Pet is so full up with catchy golden toasted flavor that, well, your appetite's going to sit up and take notice every single morning. Ask Mom for P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pet. In a 10th floor apartment of a fashionable dwelling overlooking the park, one room has been furnished as a handsome modern office. There, seated at a desk, is a square-jawed, heavy-set man. His black hair lightly flecked with gray. His clothes are excellently tailored, and on the little finger of his right hand, he wears a ring with a huge, square-cut diamond. This man is Brock Nielsen, who looks grimly now at his companion, a thin young man named Brownie, with a cynical face, who reclines in a leather armchair, his hat half-tipped over his eyes, a spiral of smoke curling from the cigarette fixed in his lips. Brownie is speaking. So you told the editor of the Daily Planet to pull that story out of his next edition, and he didn't do it. Now what are you going to do, Mr. Nielsen? What do you suppose I'm going to do? I don't know. Planet's a big newspaper, and it carries a lot of weight. So what? You think I'm going to let them ruin our business? Why, since that first story came out at noon, every one of our salesmen has called up sore as blazes. That kind of publicity will drive all the prospects away. You're telling me. But like I said, what are you going to do about it, if anything? I'm going to do plenty. That is... You are. Me? That's right. You see, White told me he intends to run a story tomorrow that'll be worse than today. Mm, he did? That's what he said. But you're going to fix it so he doesn't run any story about us tomorrow or about anything else either. That's a tall order, Mr. Neal. I uh, suppose you've got some idea of how it's to be done. It's simple, Brownie. If there's no Daily Planet and no Perry White either, there can't be any stories about us. Right? No Daily Planet. No Perry White. I don't get it, Mr. Neal. Oh, you're slow on the uptake today, Brownie. Could be. Make it easy for me. What's on your mind? A bomb. A bomb? That's right. Or two or three of them if necessary. Enough to blow the Daily Planet and Perry White to Kingdom Come. And I want it done tonight. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Nielsen. The Daily Planet and White aren't small potatoes like that cop and that veteran we had to take care of. You're asking me to dynamite a big I know exactly space. what I want. And I'm not asking you, Brownie. I'm telling you what to do. Get it? Well, sure, but there aren't any buts. There's big money involved here, and neither the Daily Planet and Perry White nor anyone else is going to stop me. I told you what to do. Hold well, that flash a little higher, Ed. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, how's this, Brown? That's better. Stop shaking. What's the matter with you? I guess I'm a little nervous. Blowing up the Daily Planet newspaper is pretty big stuff. Stop worrying. The boss says we've got to do this. Because with the planet shooting off its mouth every day, no sucker will come near us. Also, when we stop the planet, we warn all the other papers not to get any bright ideas. Get it? Yeah, sure. I don't like it. Relax. Brock Nielsen knows what he's doing. Here, give me a hand with this plate. Uh, what do you want to do with it? Just put it on the floor. Easy now. If it drops, it'll make an awful noise. Okay. Now, let it down. Uh, uh, hand me the firecracker. The what? That dynamite, you dummy. Oh, oh I'm gonna yeah. I'm put it in the machine here, see? Put the plate back. And then when they turn on the power to print the papers tomorrow morning, boom. Goodbye, Daily Planet. Jeepers. Hold it, Ed. Somebody open the door. Oh, this smoke. Get down on the floor, quick. Hey, the lights went out. Yeah, keep back behind this machine. It's the cops. We're done for. Quiet. Sounds like 
just one guy. Don't move now. I'm going to take a look. Just some old guy, the watchman, I guess. Are you sure? Yeah. Keep down now. He's coming this way. I'll give him the words, huh? No, not unless we have to. Have your sap ready, though, just in case. Yeah, okay. What? Oh, you dropped the flashlight. Stop it. Who's that? Give it to him, man. Right. What are you doing in here? Uh, uh, uh. That does it. Come on, Bonnie. We better scram. Are you nuts? We didn't finish the job yet. But we can't hang around this one. He won't he... bother us now. Well, he might have seen us. I don't think so because you got him from behind. But I know how to fix him so nobody will believe anything he says. Grab his feet and help me drag him over there by the door. Come on. Hello? Hello, is that you, Mr. White? Yeah, who's this? This is George, the night elevator operator at the planet. Oh. Well, what are you waking me up in the middle of the night for? Well, you see, Tom, Tom Stedman, the watchman, he started on his rounds of the building almost two hours ago and hasn't come back yet. Did you look for him? I've been calling, but I, I can't leave the elevator. It's against the fire laws. Mm, I see. Well, I'll try to find a police officer and let him look. I'll be right down. him in his chair. What, what happened to him, officer? Something I hope he'll be properly ashamed for when he comes to. You, you think he's drunk? Is that odor coming from him smell like perfume? Yeah, sure it doesn't. This is bad. Mr. White's on his way here and he'll fire Tom sure as you're born. Well, I'm sorry, but he deserves it. Any man does for getting drunk, especially while he's on duty. Well, I'll be leaving now. Good night to you. <laughs> I think you're being hasty, Chief. After no, all, I can't ma- stop arguing. Tom Stedman got drunk while on duty, and that finishes him with me. He's fired. No, but Tom swears he wasn't drunk. He's lying. A police officer found him with a bottle in his hand, dead to the world and smelling like a brewery. I know, but... And George, the night elevator operator, backs the officer up. Now, what more do you want? Tom's been working for us for many years. He never got drunk before. Oh, that proves nothing. Except that he's never caught before. Well, I don't believe he drinks. I've had many talks with him, and the be man is... Be sensible, not- Kent. Be sensible. Naturally, he wouldn't admit it to you. He knows the rule is that anyone caught drinking is fired. But I believe him, Chief. Meaning you don't believe the police officer and George, eh? I didn't say that. Tom says there was an intruder in the building tonight. Well, if there was, it must have been one of his drinking pals or an hallucination. Oh. Because nothing's missing. Well, now, you be sensible, Chief. A pal wouldn't have slugged him. And there's a lump behind his ear the size of an apple. So what? He could have hit his head on something when he passed out and fell down, couldn't he? Well, yes, I suppose he could. But well, I still Well, for think... my money, that's what happened. Now, stop wasting time and let me finish okaying these galleys. we we'll go to press in ten minutes, you know. I still don't like it, Chief. Yeah, you don't like what? This business last night. There's something fishy about it. I don't believe Tom got drunk. I believe his story that an intruder slugged him. No, I say to Aunt Kelly. And then I suppose the, the intruder stuck the bottle in his hand, spilled liquor around, and then just walked out because he was playing a Halloween joke, huh? I admit I can't explain that. No, you do. But I keep remembering that phone call you got yesterday. Huh? What phone call? The one from that racketeer, whoever he is, warning you that unless we stop exposing the big housing racket, something serious is going to happen. No, no. Oh, no, this is going too far. Now, don't tell me you think the racketeers are getting back at us by framing our night watchman for drunkenness. Of course. Now, don't be silly, Chief. No, don't don't I be silly. Kent, you're prattling like a child. Now, get out of here and let me finish your king these galley proofs before I lose my mind, too. Now, go on. Get out. Okay. You're taking those racketeers very lightly, Chief. Nonsense. I say they're cowards. All racketeers are. And they wouldn't dare try anything against the Daily Planet. Don't be too sure. Look. Look, now, if you're scared, get out of town. I am going to blast these rats out into the open. Boy, oh boy, just wait till they see the story on page one today. (laughs) Oh, just wait till they see it. Shortling, Perry White returns to his galley proofs, while Clark Kent continues to stand by uneasily. Certain danger is in the air, but unable to pin it down. Meanwhile, in the room furnished as an office in a fashionable apartment overlooking the park, Brownie is telling Brock Nielsen, his boss and head of the housing racketeer... Don't have to worry about Perry White and the Daily Planet anymore, Mr. Nielsen. I put enough dynamite in that press to blow the whole building to kingdom come. <laughs> Look at the time. They're due to start the presses in a few minutes. And as soon as they do, that'll be all, brother. That will be all. We'll be back with the tense climax of today's episode in just a moment. So stand by.
You know, I bet you fellas and girls feel like strutting around when you're wearing those comic buttons that you're all collecting from that brand new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out. Because when you pin them on your jacket or your dresser cap, they show up like anything, really look keen. And aren't these new Pep comic buttons beauties? The colors are so bright and clear, they, they really stand out against that sparkling white background. These pictures of your funny paper favorites are real eye-catchers. Take Tess Trueheart, for instance, with her smart hairdo and super long eyelashes. Why, she looks so real she could talk. And Brenda Starr, her hair's long and wavy and soft-looking. And Superman himself, his bright red cape flying in the wind. Boy, what a kick you get every time Mom opens a new package of Kellogg's Pet. Because that's the prize package where you get your new comic buttons. You don't send it any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy these prizes anywhere, but you get one in every package of Pep you open. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Pep, the golden toasted whole wheat flakes with a catchy sunshine flavor. Pep, the dish that tastes just as good as it is good for you. So get Kellogg's Pep, gang. That's P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. It is just two minutes before 11 o'clock in the morning. Press time for the first edition of the Daily Planet. And, as usual, at press time, there is a temporary lull in the busy hum of the newspaper city room. Reporters and rewrite men stretch, walk about, gossip amiably. Jimmy Olsen saunters across the room to pass the time of day with copyboy Beanie Martin and his assistant, young Mary Hennig. And in Perry White's office, the gray-haired editor relaxes and grins at Clark Kent. Well, well I, I guess I did what I promised, eh, Kent? What'd you say, Chief? I said I did what I promised. I told that racketeer on the phone that today's page one story would make yesterday's story read like a sweet valentine. And I was right, wasn't I? <laughs> hmm? uh, say, aren't you listening to me? Huh? Oh, oh, yes. yes. Well, then, you know we'll be on the streets in an hour with a story that'll make everyone stop, look, and listen before they give any rotten racketeers money. We'll fix their clocks. All of them. Hmm. What's the matter with you, Ken? I don't think you've heard a word I've said. Hmm? Oh, me? Yes, you. Oh. Why do you keep turning around and staring that silly way? Uh, at the ceiling and at the floor. Don't you feel well? Huh? Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah, yes, I, sure, I feel fine. You certainly don't act that way. What's come over you, Kent? I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just can't throw off the feeling that... Well, that something not so good is all set to happen. Oh, relax, relax. Nothing's going to happen. Except in just one minute, our press will start rolling off a story that'll blow the phony real estate racket sky high. Well, I sure hope you're right, Chief, but... I don't know. Hold set to roll, Mac. Okay. Press room, McKay speaking. Well, what's the matter down there, Mac? Why aren't you rolling yet? Well, we're all set now, Mr. White. I was just going to call you. Okay, let's go, let's go. Or we'll hit the newsstands after the Daily Blade. I don't... Oh, wait till those racketeers here. I'll page one story today, Kent. That'll show them what I think of that threats. I don't see a thing. Just the same. Yes, I... sir. Imagine trying to scare us into taking... Uh, uh, what'd you say? I said I can't see anything wrong. What are you talking about? Oh, well, well, ever since that threatening phone call yesterday and the attack on our watchman last night, I've been expecting trouble. But I can't oh, seem to Oh, relax, see relax. You're always expecting trouble. No. But I tell you, racketeers are all cowards. They were trying to bluff us. Maybe so. But overconfidence leads to trouble. After all, they've already committed two murders. What makes you think they'd stop it? Quick, Scott, that press motor. Huh? Oh, what, Ken? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, quick, Chief. Get into the city room. Hurry. Hey, hey, quit pushing me. Uh, hurry, Chief. Something's, something's happening. Oh, what, what, what's the matter? For heaven's sake, hurry out there and check it, but, will you? But... There, he's gone. Now, out of his clothes. This is a job for Superman. I see dynamite in that press motor, and McKay is almost at the switch. Out through that open window. Away! <laughs> Flashing out through the window, Superman streaks downward with the speed of light and zooms through another window in the press room ten stories below, just as Foreman McKay pulls the master switch that sends power humming through the cables. Like a rocketing eagle, Superman sweeps two workmen aside and hurls himself across the machine that is loaded with dynamite. A split second later, it explodes with a muffled roar, a roar muffled by the man of steel's body. <laughs> Out of control. Uh, you, you're the foreman of this shop, aren't you? Yes, sir. I'm okay. What happened? Well, obviously, somebody, and I think I know who, tried to blow the Daily Planet to Kingdom Come. Oh, 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 Everything's all right now, though. All you have to do is disconnect this wrecked machine from the line. The other presses weren't injured. All right, all right. Better get busy. Well, you'll be late getting out this edition, and from what I hear, it's a mighty important one. So get them rolling. See you all again. Up and away! <laughs> about it, Kent. 
some filthy rat loaded one of our presses with enough dynamite to blow this whole building to bits. On the level, Chief? Certainly. And if it's not for Superman, you, me, Jim, Beanie, and all the staff wouldn't be here now. Hey, it's a lucky thing Superman happened to be around, isn't it? You're not kidding. Oh, I, when I think of what almost happened, I, I get weak in the knees. Well, take it easy. It's all over now, Chief. But, uh, will you admit now that I was right? Right? Right about what? About Tom Stedman, the watchman, not being drunk last night? What do you mean? Well, I mean, it should be perfectly obvious that Tom was slugged last night, just as he said he was, by whoever put the dynamite in the press motor. But, uh, Then, as I see it, the dynamiters poured liquor over him and put an empty bottle in his hand. So that we would think he was drunk, and so be inclined to disbelieve his story of an intruder being in the press room. Hmm. Then they figured we wouldn't bother to make a careful search, and we wouldn't discover the dynamite, eh? Exactly. Hey, George, I think you're right, Kent. But who in thunder did it? Why, the real estate racketeers, of course. The racketeers? Sure. They warned you yesterday that unless you stopped attacking them in the planet, they'd stop us, didn't they? Mm, yes, but... Oh, no, they wouldn't have the nerve, Kent. What? I've said it before, and I repeat. Racketeers are cowards. But I tell they you... They operate with lying words, not with dynamite. Chief, what more has to happen to make you realize that this particular gang is different? That they're operating a big money business of swindling thousands of war veterans out of millions of dollars. I know, but... They don't want their juicy racket ruined, so they'll stop at nothing. Why, they're, they're, they're ruthless. Look, don't forget, they didn't hesitate to murder a police detective and a veteran who tried to expose them. Now they've... Well, they've just tried mass murder. Mm, well, maybe... Maybe you're right at that, Kent. Maybe I'm right. Of course I'm right. Who else would dare try to blow up the Daily Planet? And why? The dirty scoundrels. They, they, oh, now, they, wait they, a minute. They, wait a minute. Take it easy, Chief. Take it easy? After they almost succeeded in murdering us? Well... Why, why, why this is the greatest outrage I ever heard of. I know, but that Do doesn't mean that... Do those mobsters think that this is Nazi Germany, where they can shoot people who object to being swindled and, that, and dynamite newspapers? Yeah, we, we'll show them they're wrong, Chief, but we've got to move softly. You bet we'll show them they're wrong, but we won't move softly. I'm going to put out an extra edition on this dynamite story. Oh, no, Chief. Listen, you can't Don't do no that. Chief me. But I tell I'm you... I'm going to smoke those rats out into the open. But that I'll won't... i so much heat on them, they'll be easy pickings for the police. But, but Chief, I'll... listen, please. That's the wrong approach. Why? Why? You'll only incite them to more violence. Nothing of the sort. I'll throw the fear of public opinion and the law into I them. I tell you, that is not the way to fight those fellows. Now, take my advice. Lay off them for a while in the planet. Lay off? Yes. Let them think we're scared. Then I'll go after them alone. You? Sure. We know they operate through temporary real estate offices. All right, I'll investigate every land and building advertisement, contact the veterans who receive circulars, and eventually I'll catch up with our, our racketeer friends. And as I told you yesterday, you'll wind up in the city morgue. <laughs> I wish I could tell you how funny that is. And I wish I could show you how crazy you are. Didn't you say yourself these fellows won't stop at anything? Yes, but that... And you want to tackle them alone? Well, sure, but I... No, 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 no. I can't waste any more time on such nonsense. But I... I've got an extra paper to get out. But, Chief... No more arguments. But I only want to... The city is faced with one of the greatest threats in its history. I know, but... I still say the way to fight it is with the power of the press. The power of the press. I'll show those murderers what they're up against. All right, And I'll show them in headlines. Will you please... Just you wait and see. How'd you botch this job? I can't understand it, Mr. Nielsen. I had plenty of dynamite planted in the press motor, and I made sure I didn't leave anything behind to give it away. I can't understand Well, all I can understand, Brownie, is that you botched the job up, but good. Now the planet's got an extra paper out blasting us as murderers. And if this keeps up, we might just as well go out of business and hole up somewhere. No war veterans or anybody else wanting to buy a house and lot will go near anybody except responsible real estate agents and builders. Yeah, I know, but... And that's not the worst of it. Unless we shut the planet up, they'll queer us in all the other cities. The gold fields we haven't even touched yet. We can't let that happen, Brownie. I know, but I don't see how you're going to stop it, Mr. Nielsen. We've thrown the book at Perry White, but he won't scare. He's a tough rooster. Yes, he is, but... (laughs) We haven't thrown all the book at him, Brownie. Uh... What do you mean? There's one sure way left to stop White in the Daily Planet. Yeah, what's that? I'll tell you. But if you botch up this job, Brownie, it's going to be just too bad for you. Understand? Sure. But I won't botch it up, Mr. Nielsen. What's the pitch? Listen and get this straight. I wanted to come off tonight. You get hold of the boys and come to meet you. forward, the square-jawed, immaculately groomed Brock Nielsen instructs Brownie in his next move against Perry White on the Daily Planet. What will the racketeers do now? We'll be back in a moment to find out. So stand by. 
Say, gang, you know, don't you, that there are 18 new and different comic buttons in this brand new series that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. So uh, you better get busy right away on your collection. You'll want every single one of them, Toots and Casper, Flash Gordon, Superman, and all the rest, because they're doggone smart-looking, done up in full comic strip colors on a clear white enameled background so that the pictures of your funny paper favorites stand out like anything. And also because it's no end of fun working on your collection, swapping duplicates with your pals, and comparing notes on who's collected the most different buttons. And the best part is these pep comic buttons are so easy to get. You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to make sure that Mom keeps you supplied with Kellogg's Pep. Because there's a comic button inside every package of Pep you open. And is there a load of good eating in a package of Kellogg's Pep? Well, your breakfast bowl full of Pep looks a doggone golden and inviting. You can hardly wait to start right in. And your first spoonful of those sunny whole wheat flakes tastes so good, you settle down for a real session, believe me. So ask Mom to get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Late that evening, following a meeting with Police Inspector Henderson, Editor Perry White drove to his home in suburban Brentwood. Now, having parked his car in the garage, he pulls down the overhead garage doors and hears the lock click. Then turns toward his house, where in the lighted kitchen he can see Poco, his fat little cook, bustling about in white apron and high cocked hat preparing dinner. Suddenly, as the gray-haired editor is walking unsuspectingly along the graveled walk toward his rear door, two far, four dark figures leap out from behind bushes and surround him. Wait a minute, mister. Hey? Uh, who, who are you following? him, all right. What? Okay, Ed, let him have it. Oh! At Brownie's command, a blackjack wielded by a heavy-shouldered man whistles through the air to thud on Perry White's head. And the gray-haired editor groans and slumps to the ground. Rock Nielsen, head of the racketeers, told Brownie that there was one sure way to stop Perry White and the Daily Planet from exposing them. Did... Hello? Is that you, Mr. Kent? Yes. Jim? Uh-huh. Gosh, I've been ringing you for an hour. Oh, and I've been out trying to run down those racketeers. Oh, but... Listen, is Mr. White with you? Why, no. He went home a long time ago. He did? Uh-huh. How long ago? Well, let's see. We left police headquarters together. That was at least... Two hours ago? Why? Two hours ago? Yes, why? What's the matter? Well, you say Mr. White went straight home? Well, I, I assume he did. He said he was having some guests to dinner and... Yeah, I know, but... Jeez, that's funny. What is? Look, what's wrong, Jim? I don't know. You see, Poco called me up about an hour ago and said Mr. White was supposed to be home by 8 o'clock. Uh-huh. Here it was almost 9 and his guests were waiting and the dinner was getting spoiled. Well, that is strange. Yeah. We called the office and the newspaper club and wherever else I could think... Then I remembered you and Mr. White had left the office together, so I figured he might be with you. Oh, well, he might have had tire trouble or something on the way home and been delayed that way. Uh, did you talk to Foco again? Mm-hmm, just about five minutes ago, before I got you. Oh, you did, and the, and the chief wasn't home yet? No. Poor Poco was having a fit. I'll bet. The chief's dinner guest had gone home in a huff. The dinner was spoiled. Gosh, I don't like this, Mr. Kent. Well, say, I don't either. Look, Jim, uh, I'm going out to the chief's house now. You, uh... Pick me up, will you, please? It's on your way. Oh, no, no. I can get out there faster alone, Jim. Oh, please. I... Look, you got to pass three blocks from my house. Look, I'll meet you at the boulevard. Now, don't argue, Jim. I tell you, I can make much better time alone. I'll see you later. But, uh... So long. Too bad I had to be rude to Jim, but i got to get out of these clothes fast. <clears throat> Can't understand what happened to Mr. White. <clears throat> I'll find out. As Superman. There we are. All set. Now, up with this window. Out. And away! Leaping from his apartment window, Superman streaks away through the night sky from which snow is now falling. He crosses the great city, picks up the highway leading to the suburb of Brentwood, and follows it to Perry White's house, his keen eyes searching the road and terrain below. Stopping down at the rear door of the editor's home, he swiftly resumes his guise of Clark Kent. And a moment later, he is questioning Poco, the little cook who speaks only in rhyme. White must have been here, Poco. See, his car is in the garage. But I don't know how this can be. Mr. White isn't here, as you can see. Oh, well, he, he was here. It's more, he must have arrived here some time ago, too, because the radiator of his car is cold. Then where, tell me, can he be? This is all a mystery to me. It's a mystery to me, too. Didn't you hear him drive in? No, I heard nothing from within, because the radio was making such a din. Oh. Say, wait a minute. Yes, Mr. Kent. Look here, Poco. No, no, don't, don't step there. Where? There? 
Stay right where you are. Now, look. There's some kind of a scuffle here. See all those marks in the gravel where my finger is pointing? Why, why, no. I see only snow. Well, your eyes aren't very sharp. It's obvious to me that there were several men here, and I think there was a fight. A fight? With Mr. White? Could be. Look, here's where somebody went down. And see those streaks? That shows he was dragged away. Oh, no. Oh, well, let's see. He was dragged this way across the lawn. Come on, Poco. Oh, scary, 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 scary. I can see the tracks. They're right out to the street here. Uh-oh, hold it. Now, there was a car parked here. And Mr. White, if it was he, was put into the car and it drove away. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm stiff with fear. Well, pull yourself together and get back to the house. Call Sheriff Johnson and tell him to come right out here. Hurry. I'm going out to the car. Oh, woe is me. He's gone. Now, out of these clothes. This is definitely a job for Superman. Because I'm sure Mr. White was taken away in that car. There we are. Now, up and away! Walking away into the night, Superman speaks miles along one highway. Doubles back to the village and picks up a second highway. He searches that in vain. Then returns again to the village and rockets out above the third road. Failing to find a car carrying Terry White, the Man of Steel begins ranging in great flashing circles above open country, above side roads and lanes, small towns and villages. It is close to midnight when he admits defeat at last and returns heavy-hearted to Perry White's house, where, after resuming the guise and garb of reporter Clark Kent, he joins Sheriff Johnson and Jimmy Olsen in the living room. Yeah, Mr. Kent. Oh, Sheriff. Oh, gosh, where were you? We were starting to worry about you. Well, I was looking for the chief, Jim. Any luck? Nope. How about you? Find any trace of Mr. White? Not a thing. Uh-oh. I can't understand it. I've been in touch with the State Police Highway Patrol, Inspector Henderson of the Metropolis Police. I've checked all hospitals between here and Metropolis. Can't find any trace of Mr. White. Well, I'm pretty sure he was ambushed right here in his backyard this evening and taken away somewhere. I found marks of a fight and then the tracks of someone being dragged into a car. Oh, that's what Poco was trying to tell us. He was so excited we couldn't understand him. I went out there, but I couldn't see much. Snowed covered him up. Uh Gee whiz, who would ambush Mr. White and then take him away? I think I know who, Jim. You do? Who, Kent? The racketeers. Cheap racketeers. Yes, the racketeers engaged in that huge housing swindle, the ones we've been blasting in the Daily Planet. Glory be. You see, one of them, probably the head man, phoned Mr. White yesterday and warned him to stop exposing the real estate racket in the planet. Is that so? Uh Uh-huh. When Mr. White told him where to go, he tried to dynamite the Daily Planet. Well, that failed, too. I think what happened here tonight is the next move by the racketeers. Jeepers. But why did they... Quiet the planet, of course. Uh, You probably hit it, Kent. This is all my fault. Your fault. Oh, now, look, Mr. Kent. I knew they'd try to get at the chief, and I should have kept watch over him every minute. Well, you couldn't have done that. No, of course not. Anyhow, blaming yourself or anybody else won't help now. We've got to find Mr. White, if he's still alive. Gee whiz, don't say it like that, Sheriff. I've got to face facts, Jim. You know, we're dealing with murderers who are already responsible for two shootings and an attempt to blow up the planet. Yeah, but you ain't got a single clue to them, have you? Not one. The phone. You're right, Jim. I'll answer. Hello? Who is this? This is Clark Kent. Who's calling? Kent, eh? You're just the man I'm looking for. Oh? Oh, just a minute, please. The racketeer who phoned Mr. White yesterday and threatened him. What? Yes, yeah, be quiet now. Hello. Hello, hello, Hello. Kent. You say you wanted to talk to me? That's right. I want to tell you what happened to your friend, Perry White. What? Listen. <laughs> We'll be back in a moment with the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, if you should happen to help your mother with a weekend shopping, and if she should happen to need a a new package or two of Kellogg's Pep, don't you forget to remind her, because that means that, that you'll get a new comic button for your collection. Yes, sir, there's an exclusive prize for you in every package of Pep you open. And this brand new series of comic buttons is really something. Bright colored pictures of your favorite comic strip characters like Flash Gordon and Barney Google and Tess Trueheart and Superman, of course. Why, the pictures are so real and lifelike, stand out so clear against that white background, why, you're mighty proud to wear them pinned on your jacket or your dresser cap. And there are 18 new and different buttons in this series. So you better get busy. Make sure Mom gets some more Kellogg's Pep because that's the only way you can get these comic buttons. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. They're Pep's exclusive prizes. And Pep's the cereal to make breakfast something terrific, too. Why, those tender whole wheat flakes are crisp and fresh and full up with catchy sunshine flavor. Mighty good and mighty good for you. That's P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. 
Barry White's house in company with Sheriff Johnson at Cub Reporter Jimmy Olsen. Clark Kent has just been contacted on the phone by Brock Nielsen, head of the Racketeers, who said... That's the man I'm looking for, Kent. I want to tell you what happened to Perry White. Well, who are you? Never mind who I am, but get this. Unless you do exactly as I say, you'll never see White again. What do you mean? I mean just what I say. First, there aren't to be any more stories in the Daily Planet about housing rackets. You get that? Why, uh, yes, yes. Sheriff, go next door and try to trace this call. Hurry. Right. Don't stall, Kent, and don't get any bright ideas about tracing this call because I've fixed things so you can't. Now, wait a minute. Be quiet, be quiet, and just listen and do what I say or White gets it, understand? Does that mean Mr. White is with you? You bet he's with me. So far, he's alive. But unless you play ball, he won't stay that way, see? I have... How do I know he's alive? I'll let you talk to him, Tim. Okay, right. Need to say a little bit. What's cooking, Mr. Kent? Just a second, Jim. Hello, Kent? Yes, yeah, that you, Chief? No, of course it is. Look, don't let these hoodlums scare you, Kent. Keep on with that campaign, you understand? Oh, yes, but listen, Chief. No, I... don't argue. You do as I say. Let go of me. You, Hello. You hurt me, Kent. Chief. I don't care what they do to me. You can't stop the minute. Hello. Keep blasting. Keep the heat on these men. Chief. That? Chief. Hello. I'm afraid Mr. White's dead, Mr. Kent. No, no, no. I don't think so, Jim. But you heard Mr. White stop talking after the shots over the phone. Yes, but I still think he's alive because the racketeers grabbed him so they could use him as a hostage to make us stop our stories about them. They know that the moment they do away with him, their control over us is finished. Cheapers, I don't... But I can't understand why they haven't called me up again. Well, why should they? Well, they know we go to press in three hours, and we announced yesterday that we're running another big story on the housing racket today. Gosh, if only Sheriff Johnson had been able to trace that phone call last night. Yes, if. Or if Inspector Henderson could just find a clue to those guys. Well, that's another if. But I know he's doing everything possible. After all, he oh, only has... Oh, no, okay. No, no, let me take it. Okay, here. Hello? I'd like to speak to Clark Kent. It's important. Now, one moment, please. This is our man, Jim. The racket here? Yes, hop into the city room and see if you can get the operator to trace this call. Hurry up. Okay. Hello? Hello. Kent speaking. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was... Uh... I know who this is, don't you, Kent? Why, uh, let me see now. Your voice is rather familiar, I but... I called you last night. Then I let you speak to your friend Perry White. You remember oh, that? oh, yes, I yes. After you... the talking, you just listen. Now, look. Nothing's happened to White yet. You get me? But those shots, you mean... I said nothing happened to White yet. But plenty will happen to him if any more stories about you-know-what come out in the Daily Planet. You understand? Well, I think I understand, okay, but... Okay, just so you understand. Remember... One more story about us, and White is finished. Now, wait a minute. How do I know you're telling the truth? I mean, that Mr. White is still alive. I'm telling you he is. That's no proof. You don't have to do. I said he's alive so far. But one more wrong story in the planet, and he won't be. Well, wait a... Wait a minute. Hello? 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 No, oh, he hung up. If only Jim was able to trace that call. Jim? Jim, listen. Did you... Come on, operator. How about? Oh, he did, huh? Okay, thanks for trying. Goodbye. No luck, huh? No. First, we had to find out what trunk line on our switchboard his call was on, and by that time, he'd hung up. Uh-oh. Look, how about Mr. White? What did that guy say? Well, he said the chief was alive. He did? Mm -hmm, but he wouldn't let me talk to him. Well, why not? Said he wasn't taking any chances on the chief telling where he is. That sounds like a stall to me. That could be. I think it is. I think the reason he wouldn't let you talk to Mr. White is because he... He can't talk anymore. Oh, no, no. Take it easy, Jim. Well, I'll admit that's a possibility, but... I don't know. I'm inclined to believe he's alive. Now I don't know what to do about the story. What story? The page one follow-up on the housing racket we plan to run today. The fellow who called says if we run it, the chief is finished. He's finished anyhow, I'm sure. Of it. Oh. So let's run the story. We've got to get those racketeers. I don't know, Jim. We owe a duty to the public to save them from being swindled, but if the chief's life is at stake, I... Well, I don't know, Jim. This is one of the toughest decisions I've ever faced. Yeah, it sure is. Oh, but I hear you are, Mr. Kent. Let's oh, go away, Bing. We, we can't be bothered. Anything though. new about Mr. White, Jim? No. Go away, will you please? Okay, Jim, okay. I just thought you'd like to know that some guy came in about the racket work, supposedly. What? Huh? Now, I'll tell him to come back some other time. No, wait a minute, Beanie. Wait. Who is this man? I don't know. He says he thinks maybe he got gypped in a housing racket. Oh. And he read in the Daily Planet where we asked people who got gypped to get in touch with us. So oh, tell him... Where to... is this man? I told him to wait in your office. But I'll send him away. Oh, no, you won't. I want to see him. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Mr. 
Duncan, Mr. Kent. Art Duncan. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Duncan. I'm Clark Kent. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Kent. And this is Jim Olson. How are you? do. So I understand it, Mr. Duncan. You came to see us about the housing racket. Yeah. You know, something kind of funny came up about some land that I bought. I talked it over with my wife, and we thought maybe it'd be a good idea if I came down here and talked it over with you. Well, I'm glad you did. Uh, would you tell us what happened? Well, about a week ago, a guy called me up. He said his name was Miller, and he had a proposition that he thought I'd be interested in. I understand you and your family are looking for a place to live, Miss Duncan. Oh, you're not kidding, brother. You know, since I got out of the Army about six months ago, my wife and myself and our two kids have been bunking in one room. Well, then, what I have in mind should interest you. You see, I represent a large subdivision in Bunker Heights. Now, do you know where that is? Why, sure, that's just over the river. It's kind of nice up there. Oh, yes, yes, it is indeed. Fine place for children, too. Yeah. Well, we're selling building lots quite reasonably and erecting houses on them, only for veterans. Uh Uh-huh. You see, we feel the men who fought for their country deserve a decent place to live at a price they can afford. Hey, that's wonderful, Mr. Miller. Uh, look, uh, how much money are you getting for those lots? Well, we're selling nice big building plots for as low as $1,500. $1,500, That's right. Well, that's that's not bad. And what's more, we'll put up a nice little house for you for another $5,000. $6,500 for a house and a lot in Bunker Heights, huh? That's right. Well, gee, that's a bargain, Mr. Miller. But, uh, I'm afraid I haven't got that kind of money. Well, I understand. However, we are prepared to take a mortgage for half the price, Miss Duncan. You will? Well, let's see, then. That that means that I'd only need, uh, $3,250 in cash. That's right. Now, if you can raise that much, we can close the deal, start building next month. Oh, boy, wait till Nancy hears about this. Of course, the land is going pretty fast. So if you're interested, you better get out here as soon as you can. Oh. Well, uh... Look, I can come out on Saturday afternoon. How's that? Well, that's fine. Fine. I'll be looking for you. Goodbye, Mr. Duncan. So, last Saturday, Mr. Kent, my wife and I hustled out there to Bunker Heights. We met this fellow Miller. Seemed like a nice sort of guy. He showed us around. Well, we picked out a nice lot and made some plans for our house, and gosh, we thought we were all set. Of course you did. Tell me, Mr. Duncan, did you give him a deposit? And how? Fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks? Quiet, Jim. Go on, Mr. Duncan. Then what happened? Well, like I said, my wife and I thought we were all set with our own little home by now, and boy, we were really happy. But last night, I ran into an old pal of mine. I told him about my deal, and he looked surprised. He lives over near Bunker Heights, and he says that that land always belonged to some rich old codger who lives in California, and who always refused to sell any part of it. Well, maybe he changed his mind. Well, I... investigate, Mr. Duncan? No, not yet. You see, this only happened last night, and Uh also, I, I don't know how to go about it. So when I read your stories in the planet about this housing racket, I thought maybe I'd better come to you. Well, we'd be glad to look into it for you. What name appears on your receipt? I mean, who's the seller of the land? The Bunker Heights Realty Corporation. Okay, we'll go right over to the county clerk's office and check this at once. You stay here, Jim, in case there are any more calls. Come on, Mr. Duncan. This may be the clue I'm looking for. Here we are. Who's registered as the owner, Mr. Clark? Let's see. Well, here's the name. James E. Mitchell. Residence, Pasadena, California. Well, that's the name of, that my friend mentioned, Mr. Kennedy. Gosh, it looks like I was chipped. Yes, but it looks as if I've found a clue to Perry White at last. Come on, Art. You and I are going out to see Mr. Miller. And fast. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, one of the best things about this new series of comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pet is that you'll have them a long, long time. They won't wear out because they're enameled on real sturdy metal. And those bright colors are long-lasting, too. Why, you'll want to keep right on wearing those smart-looking buttons pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap so everybody can see how many you've collected. As for doggone good fun, why, you can't beat the excitement of trading duplicates with your pals. And, you know, each one of these pictures is straight from the funny papers. There's Toots and Casper, the Inspector, and the Barney Google, uh, four from Dick Tracy, Pat Patton, Tess Trueheart, Vitamin Flintheart, and Chief Brandon, and Superman, of course. Eighteen new and different comic buttons and all. So get busy, gang. Remind Mom to keep you supplied with plenty of Kellogg's Pet. Because these are the prize packages where you get your comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. But whenever you open a package of Kellogg's Pet, there's your comic button for your collection. And think of all the super delicious eating Pep gives you for breakfast, too. Why, those good whole wheat flakes are so full up with catchy sunshine flavor, why, you practically can't resist them. So, gang, ask Mom for P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. 
Clark Kent and Art Duncan are en route to Bunker Heights in Kent's car. Mr. Miller, the man Kent believes can lead him to Perry White, is just answering the telephone in his tiny, brightly painted real estate office. Bunker Heights Realty Corporation, Frank Miller speaking. Look, Miller, this is Brock Nielsen. Oh, yes, Mr. Nielsen. Hey, listen, I got a couple of hot new prospects. Stay quiet and listen, will you? Now, get this. I want you to take all your papers and get out at once. You mean scram? That's right. And don't lose any time. I just got word that the police are checking on all unknown real estate offices around Metropolis. Uh Uh-oh. Now, we'll lay low until the heat is off. A couple of days when the cops draw a blank and the Daily Planet lays us off, well, we can go to work again. Well, how about the planet? I thought you were going to take care of them. Don't worry, I am taking care of them. Now, close up and beat it. Don't waste any more time. Well, this Miller got away, Art. Door's locked and the office is empty. Maybe just went out for a while, Mr. Kent. Oh, I don't think so. Look, you can see through the glass in the door. The drawers of the desk are pulled out and they're empty. Not a scrap of paper left. Yeah. Looks as if our bird flew the coop. And with my 1500 bucks, that dirty chiseler... No, that isn't the worst of it. I was counting on Miller to lead me to Perry White. But now... Uh-oh, look. What? There's a cigarette stub still burning in the ashtray. That means Miller can't have left very long ago. Come on, Art. Where to? To that gas station there at the corner. Somebody there might have seen Miller. Come on, hop into the car. I know Mr. Miller was in his office a short time ago. I just wonder if you saw him leave. Why, yes. He stopped in here just a few minutes ago. Oh? Picked up a tire I'd repaired for him. He did, eh? Well, did he happen to say where he was going? Oh, he didn't. Uh-huh. Do you recall which way he went? Oh, I'd see. Yeah, he turned north at number 37 toward Metropolis. Oh, swell. Now, uh, one more question. What kind of a car is he driving? Brand new Chevy Coupe. Thanks very much. So long. Keep your eyes peeled for a new Chevy Coupe, Art. Miller can't be far ahead. Yeah, I guess not. Unless he turned off on some side road, Mr. Kent. No, uh, we passed only two side roads, and he didn't turn into either of them. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? We passed them at 50 miles an hour. How did you see that? Uh, oh, uh, well, I've got pretty sharp eyes. Oh. Look sharp, Art. There's a new Chevy Coupe up ahead. Where? There. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now I see it. I can't tell who's driving it yet, though. Well, I'll give him the horn and start to pass. You take a good look and tell me if it's Miller. Boy, I sure hope it is that rat. Well, keep your eyes open. Here we go. All set. Pulling over to let you pass now. Uh-huh. There. How about it, Art? Yeah. Yeah, that's Miller, all right. Come okay, on, Okay, sit tight. I'm going to cart him to the side of the road. There's a woman in front of him and force him to stop. Watch it, Mr. Kent. Don't worry. He's pulling over. Okay. There, we got him blocked. Come on, Art. Right with you. What's the idea? Crowd me off the road. Let's hey. in here, you dirty. Easy, easy. Let me handle this, Art. Uh, so sorry, Mr. Miller, but we missed you at your office, and we just had to see you. Oh, yeah? Well, who are you? My name is Clark Kent. I believe you and Mr. Duncan have met. I'll say we have. Oh, uh, why? Well, why, yes. You were at my office the other day, weren't you? Yeah, I sure was. I left 1500 bucks in cold cash with you. You remember that? Oh, of course I remember now. But I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm in a great hurry. I have a very important appointment in Metropolis. Uh, call me up. And... I'm sorry, Mr. Miller, but I'm afraid your appointment will have to wait a while. Get in beside him from the other door, Art. Okay, Mr. Kent. Now, now, just a minute. I'll get in from this side. Move over, please, Mr. Miller. We'll see how you like being in the middle for a change. Oh, so that's it. Why, you... Look out, Mr. Kent. He's got a gun. Let go. Yeah. Let, let go. Let me go. You won't have it long. Let go, Miller. No, no, I... Ow. Ow, you're breaking my wrist. I'm oh, sorry again. It. Hey, that's better. Here, take care of his gun for him, Art. I'll take care of it, all right. Now, now, now listen, you guys. No, you listen, Miller. Where's Perry White? Who? Perry White, the editor of the Daily Planet. I don't know. I never heard of him. Why, well, you guys are making a mistake. Yeah? How about that lot you saw me last Saturday? Now, what about it? Is that a mistake, too? Well, what do you mean? You don't own it. That's what I mean. Of course I do. I mean, the corporation I work for does. Bunker Heights Realty Corporation. Don't lie, Miller. We've already checked on that land, and we know it's owned by a man named Mitchell who lives in California. Your phony corporation never owned it. Why, that's a lie. Yeah, well, listen to me. Just a minute, Art. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, Miller. Yes? Now, we've got you dead to rights, and you can save yourself a lot of grief by talking and talking fast. Why? Mr. White's life is in danger, so tell us where I we can find... I tell you, find... I never heard of any Mr. White. I'm a respectable real estate salesman. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Respectable real estate salesman, yeah. huh? Listen, Miller, the white... police want you for grand larceny. If I take you to them, they'll make you talk. Nobody wants me for any grand larceny or anything else. You're making a mistake, I tell We're you. We're not making any mistakes. 
You and your pals swindled hundreds of veterans out of their savings. Oh, well, why not? Just if... as you swindled Art Duncan here by selling them land and even houses you never owned, then closing up the office before they discovered they'd been swindled and opening up in another location. Now, look, you've got me wrong. I Not only it. that, but when a detective almost caught up with you, you shot him down in cold blood. Me? I... And when I never... a war veteran discovered he'd been fleeced and started for police headquarters, you shot him down. I didn't do any such thing. Also, why... you tried to dynamite the Daily Planet because we were warning prospective victims away from you. And when that didn't work, you abducted Perry White. Uh, For all I know, you may even have killed him, too. Sheepers, I didn't know all uh, that. I didn't, I tell you. You got me wrong, Mr. Kent. I insist. I'm a respectable businessman, and I don't know anything You're about... a thief and a murderer. No, no, I'm... You're uh... wanted for grand larceny, murder, assault with intent to kill, and now a... No, 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 no. Get no, the no. chair, you rat. You deserve it. Uh, honest, Mr. Kent, I didn't do anything like that. Uh, I just sold lots like Mr. Nielsen told me. Nielsen? Who's he? Why, uh, I didn't say. I, I don't know. Come on, Miller. Come on, talk fast. It's your only chance to help square yourself with the law. Who is Nielsen? Why, he, he'll kill me if I die. I'll see that you're protected. But you're done for if Perry White dies, too. So talk now. Who's Nielsen? Well, Brock Nielsen. He runs the works. And he's the man I want. Where is he? Well, his office is in his apartment. 713 Fargo Road, Metropolis. If he knows I squealed... 713 Mr. Fargo Road. Okay, Art, we'll drop Miller at the local jail. Then I'll call on Mr. Brock Nielsen alone. Let's go. <laughs> Driving into a nearby village, Clark Kent leaves Frank Miller and Art Duncan with the sheriff. Then, secretly resuming his identity of Superman, he streaks to 713 Fargo Street in Metropolis, where, once more in his guise of Clark Kent, he speaks to the doorman. You say Mr. Nielsen went out? Yes, sir, but he said he'd be back shortly. Would you care to wait in the lobby? Uh, no, thanks. No, I'll be seeing him later. Uh, by the way, what number is his apartment? Uh, 10C. 10C. All right, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Walking around the fashionable apartment building, Clark Kent steps into an airway, swiftly resumes his identity of Superman, and zooms upward to a tenth floor window ledge. Up! Up! There, he opens a window, steps into Brock Nielsen's apartment, and seats himself in a chair to await the racketeer boss. What will happen now? We'll return in a moment with the dramatic climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, if Superman or Barney Google or Toots and Casper could walk right out of the funny papers and into your living room, they couldn't seem any more real than they do in those swell comic buttons in that new series that you're all collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pet. Why, Superman is so doggone lifelike with his bright blue jersey and flying red cape. It seems as if any minute he's going to say, up, up, and away. And it's the same with every single one of those 18 different buttons. They're straight from the funny papers. Printed up in bright comic strip colors, too, on white enameled metal buttons that look mighty keen on your jacket or your dress or cap. So how's about reminding Mom to get you some more of that sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pet? Because that's the only way you can get these nifty comic buttons. You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere, but you get a comic button every time you open a new package of pet. And boy, that's a thrill. And you get another thrill when you spoon into your morning dish of pet, believe me, because that catchy golden toasted sunshine flavor is something super delicious. Something to make you want to eat and eat and eat. So hop to it, gang. Ask Mom to get you lots of P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. <laughs> While Superman awaits Brock Nielsen in the latter's apartment, the racketeer boss, together with Brownie, his henchman, are in a nearby cafeteria smoking cigars over their coffee. What time is it now, Brownie? Uh, five minutes to eleven. The Daily Planet goes to press at eleven, right? That's right, Mr. Nielsen. Think they'll run another big story about it? I don't know. I told Clark Kent if they do, it'll be the end of Perry White. What did he say? He didn't say one way or the other. Uh-huh. Suppose the planet does run the story. Do we really rub out White? Yes, Brownie, we do. And we see that Kent finds the body with a note on it saying that unless they stop blasting us, somebody else on the paper gets to work. That's pretty dangerous, isn't it? Don't worry. We can handle it. The planet must be stopped before they ruin our record all over the country. Yeah, I know, but... Relax, Brownie. Just leave it to me. In half an hour, we'll know if the planet pulled in their horns. If they didn't, goodbye, Perry White. Meanwhile, at his desk in the Daily Planet City Room, Assistant Editor Bill Burroughs is speaking on the telephone to John Grayson, 
publisher of the paper. You see, Mr. Grayson, Kent's in charge when Mr. White's gone. And he didn't tell me whether to run this racketeer story or not before he left. He didn't, eh? No. And we go to press in five minutes. The story's already set up and in the presses, but... You know, those racketeers have been threatening us. Well, they can't threaten the Daily Planet, Burroughs. Run the story. Okay, sir. I didn't want to take the responsibility myself, but if you say so... I do say so. No criminals can tell us what to do. Our duty's to the public. Run the story. Right, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. McKay, this is Burroughs. That racket... Hey, what are the church bells ringing for, Brownie? Well, it's Christmas, Mr. Nielsen, don't you know? Oh, Oh, come on, Brownie. There's a new stand at the corner. I want to get the Daily Planet as soon as it comes out. What's your guess, Mr. Nielsen? Think there'll be another story in it about our rack? All I can say is that if there is, it'll be curtains for Perry White. Well, what if and if we... that doesn't make the planet lay off us, somebody else up there will be next. Well, I guess you know what you're doing, boss, but the planet's a big paper. It's got influence. That's exactly why we've got to shut it up. You know that if we don't, they'll not only spoil our juicy racket in Metropolis, but in the other cities we haven't hit yet. I guess you're right. You but... bet I'm right. Uh, the Daily Planet here yet, kid? Not yet, mister. It comes out usually at noon. Yeah. Twenty minutes to wait. Oh, it's too cold to wait outside. Let's go back to your apartment. No, I'd rather wait for the planet. Because the boys at the warehouse are standing by for me to tell them what to do about wait. Come on. I'm waiting at cigar store over there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look at that poor sucker freezing in the Santa Claus too. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas, boy. Nuts. <laughs> you think we ought to call up the warehouse and wish Perry White a merry Christmas? You won't be merry for him if his newspaper blasts us again today. I can promise you that, Brownie. <laughs> Two racketeers wait impatiently for the Daily Planet to come off the presses. Superman waits for Brock Nielsen to come home. Alone in Nielsen's apartment, a tall figure in blue costume and red cape stands at a window and gazes down somberly on gay Christmas throngs, carrying brightly wrapped parcels. Immediately below him, a snow-covered park at their backs, a group of youthful carolers lift their voices in song. should be the season of peace on earth for wilder men. Yet Perry White is a prisoner somewhere in great danger. Yes, and all over the world, men, women, and children, as good and well-meaning as is Mr. White, suffer poverty, indignity, and privation in concentration camps. All because of the selfishness and greed of others. Or because the Lord saw fit to give them a different color skin or place them in a minority race are simply because they choose to worship him in a different church from that of their oppressors. Love thy neighbor, our Lord said. Do unto thy neighbor as you would have him do unto you. But so many people overlook that. Yes, it would be a good world if all those who profess to worship God really did his bidding. But too many make a mockery of God's grace to steal from and cheat and persecute their brothers. Like this thieving Brock Nielsen I'm waiting for. I've got to teach him a lesson in the Christmas spirit and see to it that he doesn't cheat Mr. White and Jim and Lois and Poco and a lot of homeless ex-GIs out of a happy Christmas. Turn that radio off, Eddie. Oh, no. It ain't so lonesome with it on. Lonesome? Yeah. But just you and me and that old goat white in this big warehouse, I get lonesome, Joe. Oh, ain't that too bad. Let's switch over to another station if you have to have it on. Why? I don't like that music, that's why. Well, it's nice music. So you know what this one they're playing now is? I know what it is, and I don't like it. All I've been hearing is this dreaming about a white Christmas and then Christmas carols. Well, why not? It's Christmas, ain't it? Eh, yeah, some Christmas. Cooped up in his cold, drafty warehouse watching this guy white. Like could be out having some fun. Yeah, that's right. Say, uh, when's Nielsen gonna tell us what to do with this palooka? I don't know. Brownie said we'd probably get a call pretty soon. Oh. You think he's gonna tell us to finish him? The way I get it from Brownie... Depends on what comes out in White's paper, the Daily Planet. Oh, what do you mean? Well, the planet's been running big stories about Nielsen's racket, see? 
selling the public not to pay down any dough for lots and houses till they make sure the guys what's selling the lots really own them, see? Oh. Well, if all the war vets and the other suckers start doing that, Nielsen will be out of business, see? Oh. Well, uh, me, I, uh... I hope Nielsen don't tell us to do anything to White. Why? Why do you care? On the counter... Well, on the counter, it's Christmas. What's that got to do with it? Oh, well, I feel funny about pulling any rough stuff on Christmas. When I hear carols and see the Santa Clauses on the street, I get to remembering when I was a kid. Oh. You, you know what, Joe? When I was a kid and my mother and father was living, I used to go to church with them on Christmas. I'll bet you robbed the collection plate. Never on Christmas. I never liked to pull nothing then. Why, that's why I hope Nielsen don't tell us to do nothing to White today. Eddie the Sorty. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I guess I am kind of a softy on Christmas Day. Yeah, better not be any softy if the boss gives it to the office today. Not if you want to keep eating, like you're... You keep your health, too. Yeah, guess you're right, Joe. You guess? Just try Crawford Nielsen and see what you get. You remember what happened to Louie, don't you? Hey, hey, what's that? Relax, it's just that little playmate white over there kicking at the floor. Oh, listen... Maybe we ought to take the gag out of his mouth, huh? Nah, nah. He might start yelling like he's done before. Well, who's going to hear him around here? There ain't even anybody in the streets in this neighborhood today. Just the same, we ain't taking any chances. Nielsen says, watch this guy till I tell you what to do with him. And that is just what we're going to do. Okay, yo. Turn that radio off, Eddie. Okay. I hope that's Nielsen. I want to get out of here. Hello? Joe? Yeah, who's this? This is Brock Nielsen. The boss, Eddie. Uh, yeah, Mr. Nielsen, uh, what's a good word? Get this and get it straight, Joe. I want you and Eddie to be ready to make a quick getaway, you understand? Yeah, when? Well, check your watch. In a few minutes, it'll be noon, and the Daily Planet will be out then. Now, if a certain story is in it, Brownie will come to the warehouse in the car and give you four long blasts on the horn. When you hear that, take care of Perry White and make your getaway with Brownie. You get it? Yeah, I get it. We wait for Brownie's four blasts on a car horn. Right. That'll be the signal for White's finish. Now, don't bungle. Don't worry, we won't. Okay. Good night. Come on, boys. I can't stand any more of that, Poco. I'm going to turn the radio off. Why, Jim, that was pretty. It's a Christmas ditty. I know, but I don't want to hear any more Christmas music while poor Mr. White is in the hands of those racketeers. Oh, whoa, well, I know. We only knew where he was and if he was all right. I can't stand the suspense. Well, neither can I. I just want to cry. I know what I'll do. I'll sing for you. Oh, no, no, please. I said I don't want to hear any more music, Coco. It just makes me feel worse. Oh, well, you'll feel better when you hear me play. It's my funny song to drive cares away. Oh, no. I know a girl whose name is Liz. Her friends all call her Lizzie. She took a ride on a merry-go-round. And now poor Lizzie's dizzy. Oh, no. Didn't that song get us into enough trouble? Poor Lizzie. She's really in a tizzy. Oh, Polko. She goes round and round and round and round oh, and round. Will you stop it, Polko? It makes me dizzy. Now, tell me, too. Don't you feel less blue? No, I don't. I feel terrible. Worried about Mr. White. I'm worried about Mr. Kent, too. He isn't at the office. He isn't at his apartment. He isn't here. I, I don't know where he is. I only hope nothing happened to him, too. Oh, don't worry, Sonny. Mr. Kent is no bunny. No, I, I know he isn't, but just the same... Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, Jim, please don't swoon. It's only the clock striking noon. Oh. Oh, yeah, well, that means the Daily Planet will be on the newsstands now, and people will be sitting down to their Christmas dinners. Better now, let's have a look at this paper, Browning. Does it have a story about us, Mr. Neal? Look at this. Right on the first page. Uh-oh. Racketeers, police, war veterans, and millions of dollars in huge housing swindle. Sell land and homes they do not own. How do you like that? I don't. I thought you told Clark Kent it would be the end of Perry White if the planner ran another story not about so it. Not allowed. I'm over in this doorway. Okay, but I, I don't... did tell that to Kent on the phone. But apparently he thought I was bluffing. Well, were you? No, I wasn't. And Kent's going to find it out. Because we're going to take care of White and then tell Kent that if he won't be good, he or somebody else in his office will be next. 
That'll show them we mean business. But it, it's awfully risky. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Where's the car? Just around the corner. Okay. Now get this. I want you to get the car and drive to the warehouse where Joe and Eddie are holding white. Stop in the alley and blow the horn four times. Uh -huh. Four long blasts. Joe and Eddie will know what to do. Do you understand? You me? mean about White? Yes, yes. I told them that when they hear your horn, four long blasts, they were to give it to White and then come down to the alley. Now you pick them up, drive them across the river, and then come back to the apartment. I'll be waiting there for you. You got that? Yeah, but look, Mr. Neal. Whatever it is, skip it. Get going, Brownie. There's no time to waste. Okay, Mr. Nielsen. You're the boss. <laughs> What the... Who... Who... I've been waiting a long time for you to come home, Mr. Nielsen. Who... Who are you? Let's just say I'm a friend of Perry White's. How do you... Say, how did you get in my apartment? I... I flew in. Oh, wise guy, eh? Well, get up from that chair and let me have a good look at you. Gladly. And don't try anything. This gun in my hand is loaded. The gun won't help you. Oh, no? Stay where you are. What kind of a costume do you call that? Take a good look. Recognize me. Why, it, it's Superman. That's right. Now, Mr. No, Nielsen, no, it's a trick. Don't move. Sorry, Mr. You Nielsen, can't be Superman. You're just... I am Superman. Now, let's get Don't out move, of I said. I'll shoot. Go ahead. <laughs> Satisfied now? The, the bullets, they... They bounced right off you. Of course. You... You are Superman. Yes. And now that we've got that over, let's get down to cases. Where's Perry White? I... I don't know. Don't give me that. You're the man I talked to on the phone and Mr. White was with you. So talk now and talk fast. Where is he? Well, I'm waiting. Look. Look, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. A deal? With yes. me? Yes, yes. You've got me, all right. But you'll never find White unless I say so. Now, I'm willing to make a deal with you. Yes? You promise to let me go and I'll tell you where White is. Nothing doing. You're wanted for grand larceny, two murders, and now kidnapping, and the police will be glad to see you. But wait. Unless you deal with me, there won't be any Perry White. Really? You heard me. Everything's set for him to be finished in a few minutes, unless I call it off. And I won't call it off unless you and I make a deal. Now, look, I hate to get rough, Nielsen, but since you say Mr. White has only a few minutes to live... That's right. I'll have to forget about turning you into the police to get the truth out of you. There isn't time for that now, so I'll have to get a quick confession out of you myself. Uh, let go. What are you going to do? You'll find out. Up with this window. Now, up and away! We're, we're flying. Yes, we're five miles up, Nielsen. Getting cold? Yes, but, well, you can't scare me. We'll see about that. Are you going to tell me where Perry White is? No, no. If you turn me in, I'll get a life sentence, so I won't talk unless you make a deal. Well, let me see. I think the Sky Roller Coaster will make you change your mind. Away! Having fun, Nielsen? Uh, uh, look out! Ready to tell me where Mr. White is? No, You're no. a tough customer, but I think a drop through space will soften uh, you up. What, what do you mean? I mean I'm going to let you fall. No, 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 I'll be killed. Are you ready to talk? No, 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 wait. Okay, then, here you go. So long! Stop! Help! Superman! All right, I've got you, Nielsen. This time. Next time, I may not catch you on time. Now, are you ready to tell me where Mr. White is? No, no. No, no, I won't. Not unless you... You, you promised to, to let me get away. Still stubborn, eh? Well, you won't stay stubborn long. Away! Hey, Joe. How long do you think we'll have to stay holed up in this warehouse with this old goat, Perry White? Huh, Joe? I told you what Nielsen said. For certain stories in a known edition of the Daily Planet, Nielsen's going to send Brownie over here in the car, see? He'll give the horn four long blasts, see? That means we give White the business and then scram with Brownie, see? Well, me, I... I hope the story ain't in the planet. Because I don't like no rough stuff. Especially on Christmas. Ah, stop being a softy. Remember that Brock Nielsen is the boss, see? And what he says goes, see? Yeah, sure, sure, I know. But Shut I was... Up. Playing... Now give me a pain in the neck. Hey. 
Hey, what's the matter with White? Oh, yes. Well, I don't I'll think... I'll take care plenty, you, you hoodlums, and, unless you take these loose off me. Hey, he got the here. gag out of his mouth, Joe. Ah, I guess we'd better put it back. Now, look here. Oh, what for? He could yell his head off and nobody would hear him. Now, listen to me, you... Shut you... up, Grandpa. Grandpa? What? Why, for two Shut pins, up, I... Head. I'll smack you so hard you won't need a gag, see? Now, you listen to me. You men are crazy if you think you can get away with this. Don't you know kidnapping is a capital offense in this state? <laughs> Get him, Eddie. <laughs> a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll both laugh out of the other side of your mouth when the police catch up with you for abducting a private citizen, the editor of a great newspaper. And uh, and if you do anything about finishing me, well, you'll... Sam, you'll... if a sight and story was in your newspaper today, we'll do more to you than just talking. Well, you... uh, Eddie? <laughs> yeah. You, you, you wouldn't dare. Uh, no? No. No. no, no let, let me tell you something. You'll just wait and see. Hey, Joe, the car horn. Yeah, shut up, listen. Is it Brownie? Yeah, four blasts. That's him, all right. Okay, Grandpa, this is it. The end of the line for you. No, 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 wait a minute, Joe. Maybe we can find some... We got work to do. Come on. to their feet. Joe and Eddie approach the helpless Perry White. What will happen? We'll return in a moment with the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, you know what I found out the other day? Well, I discovered that the girls in our block have collected more different comic buttons from that new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out than the fellas have. And the boys are sure worked up about it. No kidding. They're, They're getting busy right now trying to get ahead of the girls. Well, it's a load of fun, isn't it, gang? First off, it's exciting when Mom opens a new package of pep to see which button you'll find inside. Uh, maybe it's Judy or Corky from Gasoline Alley, or the inspector, or Superman himself. Or maybe it'll be a duplicate. Even more fun, because then you can negotiate a trade with one of your pals. And no matter which button it is, it's bound to be mighty keen-looking. Bright comic strip colors on a sparkling white background, a real humdinger. And you know, the best part is, it's so easy to collect these nifty buttons. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you some Kellogg's Pet and look inside every package for your new comic button. You can look forward to some mighty good eating, too, when Pep heads the breakfast menu. These good whole wheat flakes have the good flavor that makes you want to eat hearty. They're loaded with catchy sunshine flavor. That's P-E-P, gang. The standing there to say... Uh, between us, we're going to clean up a fortune, Froggy, and uh, in short order. Well, I ain't disputing, you understand? But I still feel better in some other town, Professor. Relax, relax. How can I relax when I keep thinking what happens if that Olsen kid or the other one, Beanie Martin, runs into us? We'll be in a suit. Uh, don't worry about them. They'll never see us. How do you know? They're on a daily planet, and if uh, they'll... Be quiet, Froggy, be quiet. What's the matter? Nothing. Just that the, uh, the other customers have gone, and... Here comes Max to talk to us. Now you're going to hear all about a real money-making scheme, Froggy. So be quiet and just listen. Let me do all the talking. Smiling, Professor Blessing pushes back his plate and settles his ribboned eyeglasses on his sharp nose as the fat man in the soiled apron approaches them. What new swindle is the cunning Professor hatching? And how will it involve Superman and his friends? All we can tell you now is that the return of Professor Blessing and Froggy spells plenty of trouble for Superman and our unsuspecting friends. Serious trouble, and it starts on Monday. So don't fail to be with us then. Be sure to tune in Monday. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. It's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, when you shiver out of bed on a frosty morning, gang, that's Crumbles weather. That's when you want a toasty kind of cereal with zip and go. Kellogg's Crumbles. Why, just the name makes you think of toasty words like crisp, crunchy, crinkly, crumbled, sort of sweet and mellow rich. The only cereal in the whole wide world made in those crinkly shreds of real whole wheat. You bet, gang, this is Crumbles weather. 
Time for crisp, crunchy, crinkly Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. <laughs>